In this tutorial, we set up a complete integration of Superbase storage with N8N. From fetching random images, uploading documents, generating expiration times for those documents, and analyzing them using ChatGPT, we'll cover what Superbase storage is, its advantage over other solutions, and how to properly configure your new HTTP request to create a connection between N8N and Superbase. You'll see the critical difference between public and private buckets, how to create signed URLs with an expiration limit, and the exact header setup you need to avoid authentication errors. We'll also include practical use cases like uploading multiple files, handling them in different formats, retrieving existing files, and performing automatic analysis of images and documents with OpenAI. If you had doubts about how to configure these two, this is the only video you need to watch. First, Let's start by talking a little about what Superbase actually is. To put it simply, Superbase is your backend ready in minutes. No more server setup. Just focus on developing your application. You have the option to use a real database. The setup is fast, chat and notifications sync automatically, and real time is included. And best of all, it's completely free to get started. And if you don't like the service, you can install it on your own server, since it's open source. Let's jump straight into action and start configuring a new project in Superbase. Perfect. When setting up your Superbase account for the first time, you need to go to the official site at superbase.com. Registering is very simple. You can do it with GitHub, with Gmail, or directly with your email address. Once you've registered, you can create a new project. At first, the project section will be completely empty. These two projects here are ones we've been using for the configuration and development of this tutorial. All you need to do is create a new project, assign a name, configure it, and that's it. If you're on the free plan, you'll only be allowed to create a maximum of two projects per account. Once you have that ready, we'll move on to the next step of this tutorial. After you've completed your initial project setup, we'll continue with the configuration of our buckets. To do this, open your project and go to the storage section. Here you'll have the option to create a new bucket. You can click to create it, give it a name, and then decide whether you want your bucket to be public or private. In this case, we've already configured the buckets we'll be using for this tutorial. The difference between them is very straightforward. In your public bucket, you keep all the information that doesn't require restrictions. Meanwhile, in your private bucket, you keep sensitive user data such as profile pictures, passwords, invoices, and documents. In this tutorial, we focus only on the connection between Superbase and N8N, so we're using buckets purely for demonstration purposes. All right, with that introduction to what Superbase is, how to set up a project, and what buckets are, let's move on to the connection with N8N. For that, we're going to use a new HTTP request node. When you open it, you'll be able to see its configuration. Creating a connection with Superbase is very simple. In this case, we're connecting to the public bucket, which is called Minted World. And doing this is very easy. We'll do it through this URL, setting it up as a post method. What we're doing with this post request is retrieving all the documents in the public bucket called Minted World. To configure it, you can use the following URL, changing only two parameters. The project ID, which is very easy to get. Just go back to Superbase, select your bucket, and make sure you're working in the correct project. Then simply go to the URL, copy the section here, and replace it in N8N. This is the section that we're going to replace. And the next thing you need to change is the name you chose for your bucket. In my case, it's Minted World, and this will let the node know exactly which bucket we want to work with. The next step is to connect for credentials. And 8 n allows native integration with Superbase. So authentication is really simple. In fact, after watching this video, you won't have any trouble setting it up. You just need to select the Superbase API and setting it up is very easy, as I'm about to show you. If this is your first time configuring it, you'll see two blank sections. To set up your workspace, you need to go back to Superbase, 
go to the URL section and copy your project ID. Then, return to N8N and replace the section with that ID. This way, N8N knows you're trying to create a connection between its platform and Superbase. The next step is to generate the service role secret. To do this, we go back to Superbase again, open the project settings section, then go to the API section, and right there you can get the service role secret. We just regenerate it, copy it, and then go back to N8N to paste it into this section. The only thing left is to save it. And that's it. Now, before running this node and checking the connection, we'll write a small JSON to fetch the documents we have in our bucket. And as you can see, it retrieves seven items, which are exactly the ones we already had directly in our public bucket. That's how easy it is to connect and publish with an item. Now let's move on to a more practical example. The next thing you're going to learn is how to upload files to your public and private buckets. Imagine that you already have an item connected to an application, a server, or a website, and you want those files to be uploaded directly to your server. For this example, we create a workflow that connects to a website called Unsplash, which is an online image library. Let's review its configuration. This node is very simple. It just fetches a random image from the Unsplash site. In this video, we're not going to go too deep into connecting with this site because you can always check their documentation and API, and connecting is completely free. Once you obtain that image, the next step is to convert it into a binary file so we can process it. This is also very simple. We just tell this HTTP request node to take the downloadable URL. Drag and drop it and then execute it. Now we can check the result and the random image obtained from Unsplash. What we're going to do next is create a connection, and in this case, we'll start with our public bucket. Let's open the configuration of this node. This node is set up as a post request because what we're doing here is sending a file to Supabase. The URL we're using works as follows. We take our project ID, the name of the bucket, and add the following dynamic tags. These allow us to handle the documents and always upload the specific file we're working with. Since we're handling a binary file, we also need to activate this option and configure it this way. Once it's ready, we execute the node and then check Supabase to confirm that the file has been uploaded correctly. When we return to Supabase and review, we can see the file we just uploaded. Now, the next step is to create a connection between N8N and our private buckets. To do this, we delay the connection with our public bucket and switch it over to the private one. Let's check the configuration. It's also very simple. The method is the same. We're still using POST. And the setup is exactly the same with just one difference. We need to change the bucket name we're working with. In this case, ours is called non-public. We add our credentials, configure the body section, execute the node, and then check that the document has been uploaded correctly to Supabase. Once again, we return to Supabase, enter our private bucket, and verify that the file was indeed uploaded correctly. When we execute this node again, the whole process runs and generates a new random image, which we can now see in Supabase is the correct one, and perfect, the setup was successful. With this, you just learned how to configure both public and private buckets in Supabase using N8M. And then, back in N8M, the next thing we'll review is how to obtain a specific document. We'll do this through a new HTTP request node. Imagine you want to retrieve a particular document stored in Supabase. Let's say you're looking for a specific file. Let's go back to N8M. To configure it, it's very simple. We set the method to get, then set that base URL, and at the end of that URL, we add the name of the document we're looking for. Once that's done, just like that, we obtain the document we wanted. You can simply download it and review it. 
Another important and interesting feature of Supabase is that you can create signed documents. This allows you to assign an expiration time to the file. For example, let's configure this new HTTP request node. The base URL is slightly different. Remember, you need to configure it with your project ID. Then add the following pass to the URL, followed by the bucket name. This option is ideal for private buckets when you want to share information securely. Finally, you just add the name of the document you want to share and that's it. Once again, you add your credentials and then specify the expiration time. This time is completely configurable according to your needs and is set in seconds. Let's execute it and review the results. While it runs, let's move on to the next step, which is an edit fields node. Let's open it. And the only function of this node is to create a URL that you can use to share through WhatsApp, send by email, post on Slack, and so on. This link gives you direct access to the signed document. Once the previous node has been executed, we are going to run this edit field node, which completes the obtained URL in order to generate a link we can actually access. All right, we just finished it. If we copy the link and open it in a new tab, we'll be able to view the signed document. This document can only be viewed for the amount of time that we previously configured, which makes it ideal for security purposes. Another use case is when we process multiple documents. For this, we configure another HTTP request, which connects to one of our buckets, either public or private. This allows us to review the number of items we have so we can later classify them or send them somewhere else. The configuration of the URL is very simple. We use the project ID and the name of the bucket we want to work with. Our credentials are already set, and at the same time, we have the small JSON prepared. We wait for the list, then move on to the next HTTP request node. Just like that, the execution is finished that previous node tells us that we have four items. If we go back to our private bucket and uncheck, we see exactly the same list of items. Now we'll run this new node, which lets us display them in case we want to work with them. Great, it just finished and generated a list of items with that document for our private bucket. These documents, for example, can be sent through an OpenAI model to analyze them. For that, I prepared this small workflow that specifically analyzes images. This particular node is responsible for retrieving the following file. Let's check it out. It's a Coca-Cola app. And what we can do, for example, is analyze it using an API node. This could be useful if you have an application where users upload a file that is then sent directly to Supabase. From there, you perform an analysis with OpenAI, and that same analysis can then be sent, for example, to a video generator that animates the image the user uploaded, and it produces this analysis. That's exactly what I was telling you. You can share it with other video generation models, for example. Finally, let's go over this practical example. Imagine you have the assigned document that we created earlier, and your goal is to analyze it with OpenAI. Let's run this workflow and check the results. Once it's finished, we'll go over its configuration. This workflow first generates a signed document, creates a link, turns it into a binary document, uploads it to a specialized document site, converts it to text, retrieves that text, and finally analyzes it with OpenAI. Let's check the result. Now that we have the analysis of the document, we just upload it to Supabase. This can be used in many ways. You can share it with your team or create content based on that document. In short, the possibilities are endless. Let me know in the comments if you'd like to use Supabase to connect it with a website or a mobile app. This was just an introductory tutorial on connecting Supabase with N8N. If you're already using this tool, let me know how you use it. And before we wrap up, I'd like to invite you to join our main chatbot community a community focused on N8N. Not only will you get access to ready-to-use workflows that you can put into action right away, but you'll also be part of a group of entrepreneurs and N8N enthusiasts who are there to support you.
I'll leave the link in the description. That's it. Thank you so much for watching, liking, and subscribing. See you in the next video. Until next time.